Hey, how's it going everyone? This is GC Performance here, back with another video. Today we are going to be looking at power meters and which options will be best for you. Uh, today we're going to be looking at either the pedal option. Uh, there are a lot of different companies out there making it and getting into the market. I'm sure you guys heard news about Wahoo with the new um, Speedplay takeovers, how they're going to be introducing a power meter variant. Garmin just released a new, before these just only be available with look cleats, and now they're going to be making with um, Shimano on there. So we're going to be looking at some power meter pedals. And also the uh, crank variants as well. Uh, this is Cork, you have Stages, um, you have a bunch of different other companies as well that can make a different power meter or crank option. Uh, we'll be talking about prices of them, uh, efficiency in terms of power output and everything like that, and then also longevity of that product as well. So uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. Uh, so first off, we're gonna start with the, uh, well actually we'll start with the cranks. So they, they used to never make the power meter in the pedals. Uh, it used to only be on the crank uh, spider options. If you notice, there's also Stages, which is a company which makes a left arm crank variable, which is a non-drive crank arm. Um, benefits of these is that they're going to be more cost effective, more affordable for the consumer. I think Stages will have some like a 105 crank arm going in at like $300 to get into a power uh, meter option. Or also this Cork uh, Spider itself, I think goes for around $400 retail for a consumer. So if you wanted to get into this option or get into power meter market, uh, it will cost around three to four hundred bucks, depending on which kind of crank arm or matches there is as well. Like Altegra, I think is four hundred, and I think Durace is five hundred. So keep that in mind. Um, and then they also have SRAM Force and SRAM Red options as well for the uh, left arm fry stages as well. But to get a cork spider like this, something like this is like four hundred dollars. Benefit to it is that you're getting power meter readings. Usually it's going to be one sided for a four uh, four hundred dollar variation of it. Um, but you're going to be limited into which chain rings you can run, and I'll talk about that. So with this situation with a power meter on the Spider, uh, there are two different things called BCD. So uh, there's none right here because it's a direct mount, but there's like a bolt circumference diameter, which is this right here, which usually a 5339, which is a standard size chain ring, is 130 uh, BCD, bolt circumference diameter. Then you have a 50 and 52 tooth chain ring, which is going to be a 110 BCD. So let's say that you bought a power meter for a, let's say your, your Roubaix that comes with a 50 tooth chain ring. You didn't know anything, but you just bought a power meter for it. Once you go ahead and start learning, you maybe you want to upgrade that, or maybe you buy a new bike down the road and you get a bigger gearing, you go to a 5339. This will no longer work with your uh, different bull circumference diameter. So you're going to be limited to what kind of gearing you can run on that bike. Um, also, Cork is now making a full one-piece power meter with a chain ring that you see on the new Tarmac SL7s and the new SRAM Red Axis Grupos. Keep that in mind, let's say you buy a 48, a 50 tooth, a 48 tooth, or a 46 tooth chain ring, and you want to go up or down different variants for maybe you're going up hills or something like that, uh, you're limited to that. So you would have to buy a whole new chain ring and, and crank arm set uh, for that information. Let me give you an example. Hold on a second. So this right here, this is the option I was talking about by Quark. This is a SRAM Red 12-speed axis. This is a 5037, and it's a 12-speed, and you have your Quark power meter right there on there. Now, this is all one piece. So what I mean by that is that the whole spider and the chain ring are all one piece. If you ever want to change chain ring sizes, let's say that he has a 5037, and he wants to go into a climbing crank or climbing chain rings, which I've done chain ring swaps before for customers who could take it out of state in Florida, um, he would lose his power meter option, or he would have to buy a separate power meter ready chain ring which would be a cost of like total of eight hundred dollars i think for sram red um or even uh nine hundred dollars to get a 48 35 tooth chain ring so keep that in mind as, as well is that if you buy this which is one of the lightest variations out for a power meter crank because it's so super light this is all one piece the the um the chain rings and the spider all one piece it's a very lightweight option but that limits you to uh swapping gearing on the front unless you buy a whole power meter with it so you're losing your power meter option there but that's what I was talking about. But we'll go back to the, the other ones I was saying. That was another option I showed you guys right there. But um, also with the Shimano or the Stages situation where it's just the left non-drive side crank arm, like something like this. I know this is drive side, but we'll just consider this non-drive side. Something like this where I have a power pot in here. Um, it's a very cheap option, yes, but uh, in terms of um, efficiency for power readings, you'll get more efficiency out of a pedal reading. And I'll, I'll explain that more when we get into the pedal. But they have options. This is definitely going to be the most cheapest uh, option you can get out there for a Stages power meter crank. Like I said, it's 300 bucks for a 105 version, 400 for Altegra, and 500 for a Durace crank arm to get yourself into the power meter game. Or a $400 USD for a Quark Spider 
uh, power meter. So with the cranks, I will definitely say that they are the more cost effective of the two. Um, longevity as well, because of the fact you're not making direct contact with your power meter, like this pedal going in and out over time, dirty, grit, water, grime, stuff like that. This is more on the bike. It's above the bottom bracket area. You're not applying direct pressure to this every single time. You're not clipping in and out of it. You're not uh, overusing it every single time. I think longevity on here will also last longer for the cranks as well. Um, but in terms of the most efficient power reading you'll get, you will get some lag because you gotta think you're pushing power into the pedal first, then into the crank arm, and then into the, the power meter. So now we're gonna take a look at power metal, uh, power um, special, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Garmin power readings on here. So these are the Garmin power pedals. These were actually the version three. I think these are the one-sided ones as well. These retail for around $600. So as you can see, they have one pot on this side and that's just stock on this side. Before the announcement a couple weeks ago, these were only exclusive to running a look keel pedal. So before this, that's what I was gonna say, mainly fit wise, um, you can only run a look cleat and they can only be uh, compatible with these Garmin pedals. Um, so if you were someone who used Speedplay before and also before the, the announcement with Wahoo as well, Speedplay never had a, a full on power meter pedal or, or option that they're gonna make, but now they're making that an option. So if you had any other kind of uh, pedal that wasn't a look, option and you had a good fit for there you maybe had a specific amount of float maybe you had a different uh q factor or something like that uh these weren't a good option for you because they were limited on fit and what cleats you can run on there as well but now that all these different companies are coming out with these options it's kind of a thing in the past but still something to keep into consideration that maybe um maybe the power pedals that you want might not come in the form variation of q factor or, or, or uh they might be limited to you know stack and stuff like that as well that you can do but these start at 600 bucks. They have a dual option that goes for $1,000. But these will be the most efficient in terms of reading power because it's direct from the foot down. There's no lag. Let's say that you have another pedal. Let's say you had a crank arm like this, uh, like this with a pedal on here. And there was movement in between the axle. Maybe you had a bad, uh, maybe just overuse of the pedal and there's movement in the axle. So you gotta think if you had a, a cork crank on here, you're losing uh power efficiency or power readings into that loose axle right there and there's flex inside this crank arm as well if you're tightening it down so you will be losing it because it, on these pedals you're pushing directly down to this power meter pod it's going to give you the efficient reading right away also with the dual sided you can get right and left uh power readings in time you can get also efficiency and usage like 50 percent 49 51 48 52 I believe Cork is now doing that as well on dual sided, uh, so that's another option. But uh, like I said, you're gonna get the most efficient readings out of here. But in terms of longevity, and, and I'm not bashing Garmin at all, but I've seen more um, claims, more warranty questions, and more malfunctions with Garmin pedals than I have seen with any Cork that I ever use, any stages I use, any Pioneers that I use, any Four Eyes I've used. Um, I don't know what it, what it is. I don't know if it's just something they have with their software inside. But in terms of longevity and clipping in and out and maybe going through puddles every single time, dirt, grit, grime, we're right next to the ocean so there's a bunch of salt there. But these things have been sent back to Garmin a bunch of times. I've had replacement pods sent out. I've had one pedal been sent out. I don't know what it is, but I, the only thing I can take accountability for is that this is going in and out, your pedal, your cleats going in and out, which there's no contact with the actual power meter. But like I said, maybe just from being used and, and pushing down power on it direct to source is causing it to get worn out quicker. Uh, I know there's other options out there. I think Asimona, uh, Usumona, uh, those, those power meter pedals are like $600 as well by a different company. They're dual sided. That's a good option. Um, and then hopefully with their new uh, garments that are coming out, they should have a better software inside there that will work with Shimano They'll work with Look, and they'll also work with their mountain bike, their uh, SPD pedals as well. So I'm looking forward to that. But um, if both are working and both are price to price, if I'm spending $1,000 for these pedals, I'm spending $1,000 for this core crank for a dual-sided one, I will go pedals all day long. Also benefit too is that if you're going, let's say you're going on vacation, you're taking your bike somewhere, or let's just say you're going on vacation and you're going to rent a bike somewhere, or you're going to a buddy's house or something like that that, that requires you to take your pedals off, you'll have your power readings with you that are from your exact source and not from a different bike. Whereas if you go somewhere else, you take your pedals off and you're going on a trip somewhere on vacation, you don't have any power readings. It might not be that big of a deal, but it's still one plus that you can take these pedals and put them onto a different bike and still have your same exact power readings that you have from one bike to the other with the same variable without changing out from going to them 
a core crank to a stages crank or vice versa, you know what I mean? So this is definitely a, a really good option. I will always take pedals over the core crank no matter what. Now, if I buy an S-Works Tarmac SL7 and it comes with a core crank on there, I mean, that's a win. And if I have that much money, that's a win. But <laughs> in terms of me not having any of the two and price to price, if I'm paying $600 for one side of pods or a cork for $400, I would strive for the pedals. If I have a 105 crank and I want power in my life and I want to pay for stages, $300, it's half the price of Garmin pedals, I'll probably splurge just for the, the 105 just to see how it goes because it's still a viable option. It's still going to give me accurate power meter, uh, power readings. You're going to get the company stages, which is a great name. I'm sure there's a bunch of other companies out there that have, you know, name brands I'm not saying, um, but these are the ones I've worked with personally in the past. And I know they have great customer support, great warranty setup, and usually shops that work with them are great in terms of service and, and getting back to the people. So those are the only ones I can speak of on my behalf, but I will always take the Garmin pedals or I always take pedals over the core cranks uh, if you have the money to splurge. If you want to just get into power for 300 bucks for the stages 105, it's a great option. But that's my take on the both the uh, power meter for the cranks and for the pedals. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, please leave a comment down below. Let me know which power meters you're running. Let me know your thoughts on this situation. Um, and yeah, check out my merchandise if you guys want. GCPerformanceYT.com. I wasn't posting all Easter because I was just on vacay mode. I had a three-day week and I was relaxing. I got lazy. I got some new bikes coming out for you. Some new stuff coming out for you I can't talk about. Some other new stuff I can't talk about. Um, so keep keep it locked, keep it tuned. I'm going to be doing some crazy builds. Look forward to it. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you next video.